Hey guys, Azap here and welcome to the Season 11 Velka slash Mage item guide. This video will cover all you need to know about Mage items for Season 11. For the last 30 days people have been constantly spamming me to update the mobile fire guide and to talk about the new items and what to build now. It's time to stop, okay? Because I'm not gonna update everything when I don't know everything, you know? I wanted to figure out as much as possible about the builds to make it a quality update. Because I don't want to be update for the sake of being the first. So I will tell you the first three core mage slash Velkos item pads for mid lane that I'm going to talk about sport a little bit. For your sake I'm going to give you the most well balanced, well rounded one and I think the most optimal for beginners. So here are the mythics you want to consider. In, in Season 11 your mythic item is the most important item and it dictates the entire playstyle that you're going to go for. So I've narrowed it down to three options which is way better than the previous season, because previous season had basically one build that you kept doing all the time with a few optional side items, and it got quite boring fast. This season has way more options and it's way more fun for mages. The one I think is the most balanced one for pretty much most mages, and Velkos at the moment, is the Ludens Tempest. So mages, control mages, artillery mages, doesn't matter. They all require mana and repositioning power. Ludens Tempest gives you a short burst of movement speed, which allows you to reposition very effectively during the team fights. And we all know with better positioning comes better skill shots. So the build generally goes with starting of the Doran's Ring, two potions. Then you want to get Dark Seal as soon as possible, because Dark Seal has incredible value in Season 11. If you stack it fully, it's gonna be worth roughly around 1.3 thousand gold, even though you purchase it for 350, which is nearly 400% gold efficiency. It's incredible. Lost Chapter, Standard, Sork Shoes are obviously the best as per usual, and then you get loot inside around 13 minutes. That's a decent time to get it. Now, in my opinion so far, the best thing you can buy right after the Ludens is the Cosmic Drive item. Cosmic Drive synergizes very well. I think it's the most well-rounded mage item, again. It gives you the, the movement speed as well. So it has really good synergy. You might even consider swapping to Celerity here, actually, which allows you to position way more effectively. I think this is the core. I think these are the two core items. After this, you have a couple of options. You can choose to upgrade into Magi Soul Stealer, which is rarely worth it. It synergizes with movement speed, and it gives you way more ability power, plus it gives you the legendary item bonus, which you wouldn't get from Darkseal otherwise, but it's very risky this time around. Because Darkseal alone gives you a lot of stats. Magi initially gives you the same ability power per stack, but it can just stack further. So it's very riskier. If you die, you lose a bunch of stacks. So if you're very confident you can keep up the stacks, Magi is a great choice. But otherwise, I probably wouldn't recommend it for beginners, especially while you're learning. If you do choose to upgrade into Magi's, then fourth item I would recommend to be Deathcap. New Rabidon's Deathcap is slightly more expensive and slightly weaker, but I did the math and it's still alright to buy as a third item, but fourth item in this case with a very cheap third item is, is wonderful. Now if you really want to avoid getting Magi's, you can actually go into Horizon Focus. Yes, I'm aware right now it's slightly bugged on Velkos, but that should be patched. Now the second cast of the Velkos Q won't proc it for some reason, they're gonna fix that I imagine very soon. This is a great item for artillery mages and it's perfectly designed for Velkos essentially. Now keep in mind that this season there's a couple of variants and the defensive items are relatively cheap so don't be afraid to go into a defensive playstyle. Banshees is wonderful, 2.5 thousand, Zonia's 2.5 thousand. They have really good value and the safety considering how strong mythic items are now it's not even bad to go second item, safe item, especially to collect the cheap bonus because every, depending on a mythic, you get other legendary items give you bonuses. So the full build would look something like this. You get Ludens Tempest, Sorcerer Shoes, you would get Magi's, you would get Cosmic Drive, then you can get Horizon Focus or a defensive item, and that kept. So one optional defensive item instead of one super aggressive item, and that's basically the most well-rounded build you can do right now on Velkos and other mages. Because something like that is really good for, let's say, Aurelion for repositioning. It's really good for Oriana repositioning, as you can see here. Morello is obviously an uh, optional item here. So that's the build most of you are going to go for. Now I'm going to give you the second build, and I'm going to give you my favorite build. Second build I went to test out is the classic Landry style. Because now you know you can buy a Mythic Landry that... So you don't have to buy a Man item plus Landry, so you get Landry's right off the bat which makes it pretty efficient for a Velkos, because the burn is amazing. Now, after a bunch of testing and a lot of math, uh, it turns out Landry's is not that strong as it used to be, 
So it's not like a go-to perfect item for Velikos right now. You you have a a lot of you have a lot of choices in this season. So you want to get Landry's only if you're playing versus a lot of tanks. So if they have a lot of HP and a lot of resistances, this will be more beneficial. Now you have you have a couple of variants in this build. If you go Landry's, it's very nice to go for Demonic Embrace, which is essentially like a different version of Landry's, which only works on champions. So you have double shred. So you can basically Q someone and then deal like extra 50% damage of your Q just off of the burn. So that's amazing. One good synergy to, to note here is Oblivion Orb is quite a good purchase now. It's only 800 gold and it gives Grievous Wounds. The slight issue is that it only lasts for 2 seconds. But if you combine it with any of the burn items, because dealing magic damage applies it. If you combine it with any of the burn items, with the comet delay of 1 second and the 4 second lasting time, you can get Oblivion Orb Grievous Wounds to last for 7 seconds. So, let's say you build Landry's into Oblivion Orb versus Vladimir mid lane. You're gonna hit him with a Q and for the next 7 seconds he heals way less. That's quite good. Otherwise you don't really want to get it if you don't have the extended period unless you really want to burst out. Let's say if you're a support, you want to burst out a Yumi or, or Soraka. So to sum up here, the best build for Landry's would be, in my opinion right now, Landry's into Demonic Embrace, and then you can pair it up with Horizon Focus, because it will also amplify the extra burn damage, because you're further distance away, 750. And then you can get Deathcap as the, as the fourth item, you will, you'll have boots in between there, and you can get one of the defensive items if you want. If, you, if they have really a lot of MR, you can maybe get Void Staff, which gives you, which gives you basically 65% magic penetration with the lion race so tanks don't exist basically but that might be a bit of an overkill so you can choose a more well-rounded approach earlier to get cosmic drive that increases your ability haste so with these two items alone you get 55 haste which is quite a lot that's like 35 percent cdr on two items okay now i'm gonna give you my favorite build so far which has the highest potential of hard carrying but it's a bit riskier then i'm gonna talk about some funny variations okay Take example this game. This looks like a really weird build. So, what do we do here? We start with a tier, okay? So, the reason why we're starting tiers is because we're going, going for a mythic that's Night Harvester. Night Harvester seems really good for Vilkus, but the only issue is it doesn't give mana. So what you want to do is get tier level 1. That will compensate for your mana issue. If you run Mana Flow Band and tier, you're going to get 850 mana. So that's going to fix your mana issues. So you don't really want to convert it into Archangel until very late on. So how the build works is you always get Dark Seal, obviously, and then you just rush Night Harvester. Night Harvester, if you don't know, deals... A lot of damage and gives you a short burst of movement speed on hit of a champion but every champion has a unique cooldown so if you use ultimate let's say across four or five targets it's gonna proc on every single one of them so let's say with card assault is pretty broken but Velkos in a team fight can destroy and I had a game with this item where this item alone dealt 9,000 damage out of 40,000 mine total damage so it's a bit crazy, you know, it can deal 20 to 25% of your total damage. And this item is insane. How you want to pair it up, because the item is heavy damage dealing, you can immediately rush, let's say, something like Banshees. That's your optional safety item. And now that you're dead safe, you get a movement speed, you can get into Magi's. And now, instead of combining into Archangel, I did the math and it's more beneficial to finish Deathcap before converting to Archangel. So at last, you want to finalize that Archangel to... to get that last bonus basically so that looks like a full build you can obviously swap out things here you can swap out magis for co for cosmic drive you can you can swap it out for horizon focus both of them do really tremendous job here they serve slightly different purposes cosmic drive is more for farming and consistent fighting while horizon focus is for picking people off on long range that is the third mid lane build and my favorite so far because it can be actually insane couple of variations you might have considered is the rift maker which a lot of people suggest that it even looks like a velkozai why not build it i tested it out I don't see the value. I don't think it's that valuable because it, it makes you start a tier and you have to build it. Then if you really want to go full full heal, you go Ravenous Hunter. It's not worth it. I don't think you should you should do this. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a slow build. You don't want to do it. So the another variant you can think about is let's say the Proto Belt, which is downright stupid. You don't want to do that. Proto Belt sudden impact? No. <laughs> 
Okay. One more variant you, you might consider is the Everfrost with Glacial, which is all right. Ingenious Hunter got nerfed, but we can skip it. You don't need Ingenious Hunter to, to take because it's only 20 second cooldown on the Everfrost. It's kind of all right. You, you can pair it up with Ultimate Hunter if you want. So Everfrost is all right, but I think... But I think the other builds I showcased you have higher potential for solo queue. Everfrost might come down to competitive one day later down the road if other items get slightly nerfed. But I don't recommend you this for solo queue at the moment. So as we as we said, you got the Ludens Tempest, you got the Lion Race or Night Harvester start. Generally want to get Cosmic Drive second if you're getting it. You, you can pair up Demonic Embrace with, with some Burn, you can get Horizon Focus for pickoff. You don't have really too many choices after that, but the initial 2-3 items are the most crucial, so think about those heavily. You want to get that kept 3rd or 4th or 5th, depending on how the game goes. You can get one optional, don't hesitate on getting optional items like Banshees or Zonyas. And now I'm going to tell you one variation of the Ludens Tempest, which is what I like to call Speedy Boy reloaded and we have done this quite successfully in a high elo game well us master high high master so what you want to do is you go full movement speed now what that entails is first of all we switch out the runes a little bit you take that celerity that we talked about you get standard ludens dark seal but then you finish up boots of swiftness to get that extra movement speed now if you really want to commit to this you can even Forget about this and get the inspiration, magical footwear for extra 10 movement speed. That's quite all right. Then you get the Magice, which gives you more movement speed. Then you get the Cosmic Drive for more movement speed. And at this stage, when I hit my Q, I would get to 560 movement speed. 550. So I, I was just zooming through the enemies and destroying them. The video will be on YouTube. It's, it's, it's quite insane. So if you can position properly... Like, this movement speed enables you, like, like insane. You should never die. If you play correctly, you should never die, as you can see here, 12 or 15. My damage dealt was not absolutely insane. It was quite all right. But it makes you position so perfectly that you're unable to die, essentially, if you just know the game. And then I kind of went for a bit of a fun thing, which is Lich Bane, which did turn out to be all right. At this stage, when I built it, my movement speed was 480 by itself. And if I proc something, it was 580, and the Lich Bane would deal 400 damage per hit. So <laughs> it was quite insane, actually. I, there's a plenty of highlights from that game where I'm just running around and they're unable to catch me at all. It's crazy. So that's a really, really fun build. Now let's talk a little bit about support. So support has only two versions, which are a cheaper, more team-oriented one. And a more expensive, more selfish one. So whichever one you choose. I found both to be pretty well accustomed to the Velka support. I still run the Speedy Boy roaming playstyle. The initial one is the Imperial Mandate. The beauty of Imperial Mandate is that it's 2,700 gold. It's 500 gold cheaper than Night Harvester. That's the second variant. Uh, but it requires your teammates to proc it. And it dealt way more damage than I expected it to, honestly. It's it's a cheaper item with less ability power that gives you damage boost when you hit an enemy. And then if your ally hits them in the next four seconds, they deal bonus damage. So that bonus damage pairs up well with Dark Harvest. You can proc a lot of things. Uh, also, the beauty of this item is that it's Mythic Passive. Gives 15 AP, which is way better than... Night Harvester's Ability Haste for support. You don't really want Ability Haste. So you can quite compensate for the lack of AP on this item with a couple of items. The best thing I found out to pair up with this is immediately getting the Moby Boots, Magi's into, into Horizon Focus, which procs quite a lot. So now obviously this, the last item apart from the support item would be the Death Cap. So how you build this, this is quite interesting. You start off with a Spell Thief, then you go back for Boots Darksteel ideally, you, you want to finish up Mobis as soon as possible to get a map agency. Then Imperial Mandate has a very nice build. So you get the Imperial Mandate into Magi's and then you want to get the Horizon Focus. And then you can get the Death Cap. There's a similar style, except it takes a little bit longer to get running. But once it gets running, it's slightly better because you alone can make a lot of plays without needing your teammates. You go for Night Harvester, which will come slightly later. Because you need to buy the Darks, you'll need to buy the Moby Boots, and then you get Nine Harvester, which is roughly 15-16 minutes. But once you get it, it has a tremendous spike. 
and you move around the map all the time so you have access to unique targets which may gets you unique procs so a bit of a slower style but a more self-reliant style as long as you stick to one of the item pads i've shown you today i think you should do reasonably well because uh, they're all well tested and they've performed quite well thank you for watching and i'm going to see you in the next one Peace out.